Sight Unseen, written by Nicholas Downs and Susan McNichol. Interior, Art Gallery, Rome, Night. There's a crowded venue at an art exhibition, busy and chaotic. Inside the venue, people laugh and chat with each other. Around them are various sculptures and pieces of art on the wall. There's a name on one of the sculptures, Nathan Powell. A gong sounds. People stop talking and turn to face the front of the venue. Cody Fisher, 29 years old, mid-length blonde hair tucked in a ponytail, tanned, wiry, and lean, appears at the front of the gallery. Evening all. Welcome to the showing of some incredible artworks, some of it very close to my heart. He grins and the crowd cheers. Unfortunately, one of the artists couldn't make it here tonight. My best bud Nathan made that piece you see there. He points to the sculpture of a woman. The crowd oohs and awes. And I'm honored to be able to showcase that and more of his works here tonight. Along with work by the incredibly talented Maeve Lockhart. Fade to black. Exterior, Nathan's house. Studio, night. A light is on in a small garden studio at the bottom of a property. The door is open. There's music inside. Nathan Powell, 29 years old, dark brown hair, slim, sits engrossed in his art, hands covered in clay as he turns the potter's wheel. Strains of chill music emanate from a dock on the work table in which an iPod sits. He's focused on the task in hand. Cut to. Interior, nightclub, night. The nightclub is filled with men dancing with each other. One man in particular, late twenties, very handsome, is dirty dancing with another on the dance floor. He's enjoying himself. The song finishes. He leans in close to the other man, intimately, whispers something, then makes his way through the throng of gyrating men towards a restroom. Interior, nightclub, night. He enters the restroom. His phone rings. He looks at his cell phone, ignoring it. Caller display says Nathan calling and displays a picture of a smiling Nathan. It goes off, then rings again. The dancer looks hesitant, then disconnects the call. He makes his way over to the urinal where two other men are peeing. Interior, Nathan's house, studio, night. Nathan holds his cell phone to his ear. He frowns, disconnects the call, then tries again. The name John is reflected on the display. The call disconnects. He frowns, then puts his phone down hard on his pork table. He stretches, looks around his studio, then begins to clean up. Interior, Nathan's house, bedroom, night. Nathan is changing into jogging clothes. There are still smears of clay on his hands and arms, even a bit in his hair. He's tense and moody. Once he's dressed, he leaves the bedroom, walks through the house, and exits the front door. Fade in. Exterior, street, night. Nathan jogs down a dark road. His face and body are tense, and he's in his own world. Nathan builds up his speed. Faster and faster, Nathan's feet pound the concrete, each stride hitting a tone of pure frustration. He hears the call of night birds all around him and the beating of his own heart, slowly increasing. Suddenly out of nowhere, there are headlights, a screech of tires, and a thud. Silence. Exterior, grassy ditch, night. Nathan's body rolls down the slope into the ditch. Blood pools from his head where it struck a large rock. He lies motionless, eyes closed. Exterior street, night. In the distance, someone gets out of a car, visibly agitated. They stand, staring down the road. They get back into the car and pull away with another screech of tires. The car taillights are bright red and slowly get dimmer. The screen goes black. Interior, hospital, morning. We are still in blackness as sounds start to creep in. Breathing, beeps, words, blips. The room slowly grows brighter, with flashes of white revealing small glimpses in the hospital room, blurry at first, then starting to come into focus. The background noise grows louder as the scene gets clearer. Nathan lays in a hospital bed, IVs coming out of his arm, a bandage around one of his hands. John lays sleeping in a chair in the room. Nathan wakes up slowly, groggy and disoriented, turning his head from side to side. He reaches up and feels his eyes. This gesture seems to cause even more confusion for Nathan. He starts to reach for anything around him to get a sense of his bearings. His arm hits a metal bowl on the table next to him and knocks it off. It hits the tile floor hard with a loud clang that visibly bothers Nathan. This gets the attention of John. He rushes to Nathan's side. You're up. How are you feeling? John, where the hell am I? A hospital. You... I can't see you. What's going on? Nathan reaches up again at his eyes, as if trying to remove something that's not there. John grabs Nathan's hands and pulls them down. Nathan. 
Nathan pulls away from John's grasp. Panic flashes over his face. He starts to frantically grab at his own face. Each attempt works Nathan up even more than the last. Calm down, Nathan. What's going on? Tell me, John. A nurse comes in from the hallway and into the room. She takes hold of Nathan's arms and tries to stop him thrashing around. Try and remain calm, Mr. Powell. The nurse's voice only freaks Nathan out more. His panic is now at a ten. He thrashes about, flailing wildly, clearly panicked. John takes hold of one of his arms, trying to calm him. The nurse injects something into Nathan's arm. Ouch! That fucking hurt! He falls back on his pillow, and it's lights out. Interior. Hospital. Day. Nathan's eyelids flutter. He's half awake. He hears familiar voices and turns his head towards the sound. John is in the corner of the room, talking softly to Caleb, tall, handsome, with Mediterranean looks. He is the man who was at the club with John. They have no idea who hit Nathan. Someone called it in, and the police haven't been able to trace it. How is he going to be able to work again? And how are you going to cope if you can't see? 